see everybody right so again, um, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me today. Um, if, if you joined a little late, my name's Tim Conroy. I'm the executive director here at Capital Lakes. And uh, I just want to uh, go through what we'll, we'll talk about, and then we can have a bit of a discussion afterward. Um, I'll tell you about what, how things are going here at Capital Lakes. Uh, then we'll hear from our resident association president, I'll hear from our medical director, and then answer some questions uh, of yours uh, when we're done. So first, uh, what are we doing? Uh, you know, I gotta be honest, life, life is good right now. We're very fortunate. Um, we've adjusted how we operate and we've had um, no residents have had any cases and uh, extremely small amount of staff who, who have had cases throughout, throughout the pandemic here, but um, things are going well and um, we're, we're working hard as a team. And I, when I say a team, it means uh, the staff, the residents and families, everyone is really playing their part as we've we've heard um, throughout this time that uh, everyone has to do their parts for us to get through this. Um, I, I mentioned we adjusted how we operate. Uh, one of the biggest changes is dining. Our uh, dining rooms uh, were closed at the beginning of the pandemic and we've been doing um, takeout meals, uh, three meals a day um, since then. And we have lots of different, uh, our staff here prepping our meals. Um, our menu has stayed pretty much the same and um, we get those meals to people immediately. So they're, they're always coming uh, fresh and hot during the different hours. Um, and our staff have really done a nice job um, getting creative and, um, and keeping the, uh, the great food that we're known for, for going. So they all work together, all the wait staff that usually be serving people at their tables, work on assembling all these meals, they get them on different carts and, and away they go. So that's gone extremely well. Uh, our since uh, about a month or so, we've had our um, dining room open for dinner following all the Dane County uh, guidelines, wow. which is 25% uh, capacity and uh, one person per table or two if you're in the same household. Um, and then we have some longer tables if, if people do wanna um, share a meal uh, far away from each other, that's possible to still be able to do that safely uh, at, at Capital Lake. So, that's good. We have our wellness center open again. We're offering our fitness classes outside and uh, that is going well. Those are attended very well. Um, we have those classes. So we've been able to adjust and, and keep going. So keep people uh, fit. We also show fitness classes on our in-house TV channel um, twice a day as well. Our pools are also open as is the wellness center, all following the different guidelines that, um, uh, Dane County's put in place. So now it's a reservations needed and there are only a few people at once in there and then everything's cleaned, um, which is great. So, and, and people wear masks, do everything that we need to do. Our staff have been wearing masks since um, uh, March, which is, uh, which is good to hear some of our dining team. Um, lots of different masks. As you see in your travels, people, uh, people get creative now. So we have the masks all over, but um, it's an important part of, uh, being able to keep doing uh, what we're doing, which is uh, providing people an excellent experience. And um, I feel that we're continuing to do that. Even our Bucky uh, from Bucky, Bucky on Parade that we uh, sponsored uh, has his mask as well. And we're not, um, we're not slowing down on that. We even have Capital Lake masks if people want one of those. Um, I wanna um, ask our uh, resident association president, uh, Ingrid Roth, who is a, uh, uh, chair, the uh, president rather, of the Capital Lakes Resident Association um, this year. Um, it's been quite a year and she is here with us. And um, I just asked her to um, kind of give a, a, a perspective on how things are going from, from the resident end. Ingrid? Thanks very much. Uh, and thanks for inviting me to say a few words. But first I wanna give a pitch for the Capital Lakes Resident Association because I'm assuming you will all move here. Um, and, and when you do, you are automatically members of the Residents Association. And I would encourage you to become active in the association because it's a good way to meet people who live, live here. Uh, right now we're mostly, or we're almost entirely doing things by Zoom. So it's not quite as easy to meet people as it will be once once we pass all the tests and get all the vaccines. 
um, but there's residents do work hard to try and figure out ways that where we can help take care of each other, help entertain each other. Uh, and so it's a good way to get to know people. I, I would like to point to note for you all that residents here feel that this is a very safe place to live during the pandemic. Um, we are very grateful to the staff, starting with Tim and his team and all the other staff who work here um, because we think they are planning very well for what has to be done while trying to meet many different needs. And believe me, we would be critical of Tim if he <laughs> slipped up there. So, um, so right now we think that Tim and all the staff are doing a wonderful job. We were so concerned about the staff in the course of this pandemic that we started raising money for the foundation so that the foundation could expand the assistance it provides to staff because we want to help retain these staff. Um, and there are some very interesting stories about how the foundation has been able to help um, help the staff who need it as their spouses get furloughed and uh, other kinds of issues. Um, so I'd be happy to answer any questions, but um, overall, I think, you know, people who want to go out are free to go out. People who don't want to go out at all don't have to go out at all, and they still get all their needs met. So it's possible to, um, to enjoy things here and feel safe during this very stressful time. Thanks. Thank you, Ingrid. Um, if people do have questions for Ingrid, uh, you, you may need to unmute yourself, but feel free to ask now, or if I don't hear any, we'll, we'll move forward. I won't do it. I just do have I do have questions, but I'd sort of like to wait and- Okay, no problem. Hear the whole, whatever presentation you have for us. Today. All right, it won't, it won't, be, it won't be long. Um, so again, um, Ingrid, thank you for, for your words and, and, and pointing that um, stuff out. I, I do think it's a good point that we, um, if you want to leave, you, you can leave and go somewhere. But if you don't, um, we'll make sure you get everything you need. And that has, um, that has gone very well. Uh, I want to now go to our uh, medical director, uh, Dr. Ann Browse, who works with UW Health. She is... Um, works uh, as our medical director, as I said, which is part of the health center, um, required to have a, a medical uh, doctor oversight. And she is uh, also as part of our, um, the education we constantly do with staff works at Capitol Lakes on Thursdays. And um, put this pr uh, presentation together, um, kind of catered to you as waitlist members um, um, that we recorded this morning. So we'll get to that and then, um, We'll, we'll move on uh, after that. So here we go with Dr. Browse's presentation. Hi, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to view this today. Um, I am Dr. Ann Browse. I am a geriatrician with UW Health and the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health. And I'm also the medical director at the Capital Lakes Health Center here. And I am going to give you a little brief update on COVID-19 in our community and at Capital Lakes. So as many of you are probably aware, COVID-19 cases are going into kind of a precipitous climb in Wisconsin. Um, the Department of Public Health for the state of Wisconsin has a great website with daily updates in the cases and the trends in the state. And this is a graph looking at over time, the number of cases that are diagnosed daily in the state of Wisconsin. Um, it begins over here back in March, and then it brings us up to the present day. And um, as you can see, kind of initially, our cases started trickling in uh, in March, and there were some kind of peaks and troughs, and we had a little downturn um, in early June, which was uh, optimistic. Uh, unfortunately, since mid-June, we have had a really considerable rise in the daily number of cases uh, diagnosed. And in fact, now we're past 44,000 cases that have um, been diagnosed in the state of Wisconsin since March. Um, and so, um, 
that encourages us to keep up with our safety. I know that we are all growing weary of the physical and social distancing, um, but in order to really keep ourselves safe and um, do what we can to help mitigate this pandemic, it's really on our shoulders as individuals to protect ourselves and protect others. And so what are the best ways to stay safe? Well, you have probably heard these tips before, but there are three tips really being projected from public health and from our community leaders um, on how to best keep yourself safe and keep other people safe. So I'm just gonna reinforce these all for you today. I'm calling them the three W's. The first is to wear a face covering. The second is to watch your distance, try to keep it greater than six feet from people that you do not share a household with and wash your hands. So we've all heard all of these things before, and I'm gonna take a moment to dive into uh, a little bit of the background on the importance of each of these to hopefully uh, reinforce the importance of each one for you. Oh, you should wash your hands a lot in particular. <laughs> so um, the first is to wear a face covering. So why, why are we trying to impose this upon people? It's clearly, a change in our culture and a little bit uncomfortable to wear these things. Well, um, as, as you may have heard, uh, COVID-19 virus is uh, really caused by um, spread through uh, particles of virus that get expelled when you are talking or sneezing or coughing. And these little microscopic viruses get stuck on little droplets of moisture from our respiratory tracts and get shot out into the air. Here is kind of an image of somebody sneezing where you can get an idea for kind of the grossness of these things being shot out into the air around us. Um, and so wearing a face covering, the goal is simply to try to reduce these part particles from being spread out into the air around us and getting onto the faces of those around us and getting into those bodies and infecting those people. Um, uh, initially, um, there was some data that suggests actually wearing a mask tends to protect others around you by keeping you from spreading the virus um, with these particles, um, and that there's less protection maybe for you as an individual um, if there are particles in the air that a cloth mask may or may not kind of reduce your own risk of inhaling those particles, but there's actually mounting evidence now that wearing a mask both keeps you from spreading but also protects you from inhaling it. Um, what's tricky about the COVID-19 virus is that um, kind of unlike the flu and other common viruses, you actually can become um, contagious before you even know that you're infected, before you have symptoms. What we're finding is that the peak of the um, transmissibility of the virus actually um, begins a couple of days before you start having symptoms that um, the virus is brewing in your body, but you haven't started coughing or having a runny nose yet, um, but you're still able to spread those little viral particles. Um, and then once you start to develop your symptoms, you continue to be very infectious for the first two or three days after your symptoms starts. And then you can still spread it for days after that, but um, your contagiousness kind of decreases over time. So what's scary is that uh, you may have this virus and not know it and be spreading it to other people and not knowing it, which is why it's important to wear a mask all the time, whether or not you're feeling fine, because there may be a chance that you've been exposed and have actually contracted it and don't even realize it. So you wanna keep that mask on to help keep yourself and other people safe. Um, there was this great, really fascinating and kind of uplifting um, case study uh, that just came out and has been publicized recently. Um, the Centers for Disease Control actually highlighted this in their weekly morbidity and mortality report last week. Um, a case of two hairstylists who were working in a hair salon in Missouri um, in June, and or actually I believe it was in May that this occurred. Um, and, oh no, sorry, no, it was in June. Um, and they uh, were, it was, you know, during the pandemic and there were um, community initiatives to have everybody start wearing face coverings. And these two uh, hairstylists um, developed respiratory symptoms, but they hadn't yet gotten tested for COVID and they continued to go to work and cut hair for their clients. And so over the course of a couple of days, uh, they cut the hair of 139 people. So the salon stylists were wearing face coverings as were all of their clients. And um, subsequently, both of those stylists got tested for COVID because they continued to have these you know, cough and respiratory symptoms, and they were found to be positive. So the public health department in their city went back and contact traced, um, tracked down all of the people who had gotten their hair cut from these two folks um, to see if they got COVID. And they actually found that not a single one of the 139 people um, went on to have COVID symptoms or infection. 
Uh, and so that is sort of a lovely testament to the fact that if we really are wearing masks, we can protect ourselves and those around us. Um, and so I am sort of hanging on to that um, as I remind myself to wear my mask when I go out. Um, the next point is to watch your distance, this greater than six feet distance. Um, and so where is this coming from? Well, um, what we know again is that these, these viral particles and these like little droplets that come out of our mouths and noses when we're talking and sneezing and coughing, um, in general, they are not able to spread more than about six feet into the air in front of us. Um, and so kind of the, the science has fallen upon the recommendation of the six feet of space. So as you can see here, if you've got two people that are talking or facing each other, and this one maybe is sick with the virus and is talking and projecting into the air in front of him. Um, if this person is standing greater than six feet, these little viral particles are probably not going to jump through the air farther in order to get to that person. Um, if they're wearing masks, that helps even more. But again, just maintaining the space is going to be helpful. And so anytime you're out um, in public and in a place where you um, can't be more than or it can't be more than six feet um, from other people uh, it's a good idea to make sure you're wearing the face covering to protect yourself and other people um, but if you are able to maintain great you know six feet of space or even more um, that unto itself provides some protection and even better is to wear the mask and maintain that face so um, please do so um, and finally wash your hands so this is the age-old advice that all of our moms and dads have been giving us since we were tiny children for generations and generations that washing your hands is good um, and the truth is it's very good um, there was a study that was done uh, it was specifically on the flu virus this is a couple of years old um, in which they were looking at rates of transmission of flu and they found that um, people who washed their hands 10 or more times per day had less than half the rates of influenza infection than people who did not. So it's really all about getting those little virus particles off of your hands in case you've accidentally gotten them there without realizing it. Um, so that if you do touch your face or touch your mouth or blow your nose, um, those little virus particles are not going to get into your body and make you sick. Um, a little bit of the science behind how soap works. I actually love this because I feel like it reinforces the importance of washing our hands with soap and doing a good job of it. Um, here's a little cartoon demographic. So the coronavirus, um, this is sort of a cartoon rendition of a microscopic coronavirus. And it, it basically, you think of it as like a little sack, a little balloon kind of filled with genetic material for the virus. And the balloon itself, the layer that kind of contains the whole virus, the sac um, is, is called a lipid membrane, um, and it just encapsulates the virus. And then if we think of soap at a microscopic level, soap is actually created of these tiny, tiny little particles um, that have two parts to them. They have a little tiny head, which is hydrophilic, so it attracts water, and then they have a little tail. It's called hydrophobic, so it repels water. And when soap mixes with these viruses, um, the hydrophobic tail part actually kind of inserts itself into the virus membrane and breaks it open. So it like busts open that little balloon um, and the insides come pouring out and the virus dies and breaks off into little pieces. And then the soap particles actually surround those little pieces of broken up dead virus um, and form these little micelles or little tiny microscopic bubbles. And then when you wash the water onto your hands, um, it just washes those all the way off of you. So the washing of your hands doesn't just physically remove the virus, it also breaks apart and kills the virus when you're using that soap. And so that's why you gotta use soap when you wash your hands. So please, please do that and wash your hands frequently. Um, and finally, um, I just want to reassure everybody that Capital Lakes is really working so hard to keep all of its residents safe in the midst of this pandemic. Um, a lot of action behind the scenes, um, strategizing and planning for best practices to help everybody. And I'm just going to read you a quick excerpt from um, a brief uh, uh, article that I wrote for our um, quality assurance newsletter last month, because I think it summarizes some of these main points pretty well for you. So at Capital Lakes Health Center, the safety of our residents and staff is our number one priority. And we've been working diligently to remain up to date on COVID-19 issues and to implement the highest level of safety and care. Some of these efforts include 
frequent team in, uh, excuse me, frequent team reviews of guidelines and recommendations posted by the National Centers for Disease Control, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, and the Dane County Public Health Department. During the week, we have daily weekday meetings of the COVID-19 Campus Committee, which includes staff and administrators from the Health Center, Health Center Assisted Living and Independent Living Buildings uh, to review and share ideas. We have a regular review and optimization of our facility stores of personal protective equipment, so masks and gowns and gloves and hand sanitizer, um, and also the cleaning and disinfecting supplies and protocols that we're using. Um, we are collaborating and in frequent communication with other skilled nursing facilities in the Madison area and across the state um, uh, in order to um, communicate ideas and also advocate for our residents and staff on issues like increased access to COVID testing um, and increased access to personal protective equipment. Um, we've been able to successfully implement telemedicine visits for our residents in the health center um, so that they can maintain contact with physicians and other medical providers um, through phone or video and then um, eliminate the need for them to keep going out into the community for medical visits. So that's been a really nice um, new technology. Um, we participated in facility-wide COVID-19 testing of residents and staff. Um, and we are in, always in the process of creating protocols so that we're prepared to safely isolate and care for residents if they do develop COVID-19 infection, while at the same time minimizing the risk of spread of the virus um, elsewhere on the campus. And then of course, one of the hardest issues has been a restriction of visitors as a part of the required effort to reduce the chances of COVID-19 getting into our campus. Um, our hearts really go out to the residents and their families and their friends who are affected by um, the physical separation from their loved ones. Um, our staff are putting in extra time and effort to provide companionship for residents and to optimize connection with loved ones through technologies like FaceTime, Skype, and Zoom. And I do just want to say that in spite of the difficulties that COVID-19 has really produced in all of our lives, it's been really heartening to see all of the ways in which staff and residents and families um, have faced these challenges with grace and creativity and compassion. Um, I'm really proud to be a part of the Capital Lakes team through all of this. I've been so impressed with how everyone is stepping up to do our best through all of this. So um, thank you for listening today. That's all I have. Well, Dr. Browse uh, is, is fantastic and we really enjoy uh, working working with her. She, she also presents um, every couple of weeks to our residents. We do a weekly uh, Zoom meeting on Thursdays at one o'clock and, um, and she'll be there to answer questions um, every every couple of weeks. So. Um, Dr. Bowles at the end mentioned, you know, visitors. We're we're uh, opening up um, our assisted living to visitors uh, next week, and uh, just waiting on the um, the health center. Our independent living people can. Um, we're just encouraging outside visits right now, just because it's much safer outside. But we're also uh, moving people in, and and the reasons um, we're hearing from people and why uh, they want to be here is uh, safety and security, um, the different services. Um, all the meals, the housekeeping, uh, we're able to get you to medical appointments, uh, the in-house fitness, and um, the different uh, measures of safety that we are putting in place and have been uh, fine-tuning for, uh, for months now. Um, to the safety, again, we, you know, we are always uh, working with our staff um, and training them on, on really the, the best practices, and, and Dr. Browse hit on those, and, and we've all heard them. Uh, it's, it's just stay stay six feet apart from each other, wear a mask and, and wash those hands a lot and, and things can go pretty well. Um, so we train those staff, we are always adjusting the procedures as I mentioned and finding the ways to mitigate risk. And um, we've done um, a very good job of that. And that's again, as I said, everyone is a part of that. Uh, everyone plays their part. As we look forward to the, the next stage of things, um, we have uh, ordered a machine to do uh, COVID-19 testing that will arrive in the fall that will allow us to um, uh, get tests uh, right away uh, and results right away when we need them. Um, as we kind of see what, what will be there, how we can, um, you know, if you get a negative test, can you, can you do more things, that sort of thing um, at, at that moment. So we're, we're prepared for that and uh, we keep, keep learning more every day. I know um, those of you who are uh, news consumers like, like myself, you can just learn a lot about this every single day. Um, ways we're uh, getting people here. Uh, one is our, our community tours. Um, we actually have um, a, a new video tour set up, which uh, you know you can get from an individual apartment, which looks um, 
looks like that. And then, and then we go in and, and show you that through a program called One Day. And then um, we also have in-person tours available, which uh, you just make an appointment for. And if you're interested in coming down, we do our, uh, our health screening. If you've been to the doctor, it's the same type of health screening. And then we, um, we can give you a tour of the different apartments we have open. So um, we're fortunate that things are continuing to go well. And uh, we're looking forward as we move into the, the next stage of, of operations and, and working our way through this. So now I'll let me, I'd like to open it up to questions. So I'll, uh, I'll stop the screen share and uh, we can go to some questions. So I know that um, someone had a question. Oh, let's go with, uh, is it Michelle? Uh, my name is Judy Loveless. I have the wrong name. For the <laughs> okay, Judy, go ahead. <laughs> okay, a question about uh, space for quarantines. For example, if you had a couple living in your assisted living and you know one of them is exposed and needs to be quarantined, can they go and stay at Cap Lake somewhere and be quarantined for 10 days? Yeah, so if, if someone was, if a couple were exposed, if, if one member of a, of a couple were exposed, most likely it would be treated that both were exposed just as a safety precaution. Um, and we would, um, if someone was in assisted living, we'd actually be moving them to our health center, which uh, we can give a, a, a private room. Sure. And then, um, and those staff are dealing with precautions constantly and have done a good job with. So that's what our plan is for that. If another, um, yeah, so it really, if you do live with someone and you're exposed, it's on and pretty much public health treats it as you both are exposed. Okay. But yeah, there are places that we're able to, to you know, manage that if, if needed. Thank you. Yeah, Mary, did you, you had some questions? I don't wanna take everybody's airtime. So if somebody else wants to butt in, just do that. Um, so I've been a fitness center member for a really, really long time. And um, when I got the email, I wanna preface this a little bit. When I got the email from Emily that they were only opening up to residents, I immediately emailed her back and I said, I totally, totally supported that. And I still do. So this is not me trying to uh, warm my way into the pool, although I'm desperate for a good swim. Um, but I'm just curious. Um, yeah, all my pools are closed and yeah, so that's a whole story. But how is Emily's system working and our residents taking advantage of the fitness center? Because I think that makes everybody feel better if they can get a little exercise. I know her, her class outdoors is awesome. Um, but are people taking advantage of the fitness center? Yes, they are. Um, our, we, we allow about three people in at a time and you make a reservation. Uh, it's a 45 minute reservation and then we, you know, app, every, it's for every hour. So it's cleaned after that and it's busy. Um, so th there has but, to be a staff member in there and, and mm -hmm. it is very busy. Um, our pools, uh, if those of you who may have a pool or no pools, they, they tend to break. So our, our, our big pool right now, the uh, sprinkler system above it, which I know sounds silly that there's a fire sprinkler above a pool, but those are the rules. And uh, that has a leak in the pipe. So we had to drain the pool while that's getting fixed right now. But then people reserve a lap space and, and can swim. So uh, people are taking advantage of it. That was what was really, uh, really requested constantly. One of these things going to be open again. And, and we're following public health guidelines and, and working with our medical professionals here to make sure that we're, we're doing that correctly and things have gone very well. Well, yeah, cause I just, yeah, I thought it was an awesome idea to open it up for residents. Um, so it kind of leads me into my next question, which is if you were to ask all the uh, independent living residents, what has been their favorite activity that they can still do on campus and what would be the thing that they don't like the most? I mean, what's a favorite thing what's working well, the one thing that they really enjoy that they can still do, and, and what is something that is, bleh, I really am not liking that. Ingrid, do you mind starting that first and then I can try my, my answer? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, I'll try. Um, so <laughs> I think the, what, what I hear the most positive feedback about um, from residents regarding how they spend their time uh, is, 
currently Channel 900, um, which is the in-house TV station, which has a lot of different things on it. Um, and people, so there are movies, um, we're streaming uh, a debate for Senate District 26 tonight, um, which is the Senate District that Capital Lakes is in. Um, there, there are, as Tim mentioned, there are exercise classes. There are other kinds of informational things that are shown on Channel 900. So that's, people I think really appreciate that. Um, the uh, ability to exercise, especially now in the, uh, when the weather is somewhat nice. Nice. Um, the, the fact that people can go outside and do hikes and long walks and, and people do go out with their friends and maintain social distance. You know, you can hike and keep six feet apart and wear a mask. Um, I, and now people are beginning again to enjoy um, being able to dine in seasons. I would say that was the thing that people most disliked about the current pandemic preparations is uh, that was uh, probably the single largest source of interaction with other residents and with your guests who come in from outside was to have dinner at seasons. And so when seasons was closed that uh, people were missing that a great deal. Uh, I do think people who have children or other close friends in Madison who have figured out ways that they can uh, meet with them. Um, so that's that the problem of not being able to invite your grandchildren over to your apartment um, is somewhat ameliorated. So your turn, Tim. Yeah, yeah I think I think you hit the you hit the high points. I know that people. Um, they're, they're enjoying, uh, enjoying the food um, that it has gone well, um, despite, you know, really being able to gather in groups and, and, eat, and share a meal or just kind of go down to the dining room and, and see who you sit with, um, you know, sharing meals that way. Um, it's getting them in your room and, and having that uh, quickly delivered and, and it tasting good has been helpful. Um, people are enjoying the, uh, as Ingrid mentioned, the channel 900, which is our in-house channel that shows up on the um, charter for us here. People uh, used to just be a sign, kind of digital signs floating by, and um, we were able to really convert that, and um, we'll be taking the next step of conversion um, when we get some new technology in for that. But we're able to show Zoom meetings like this on there for people that may not be uh, too computer savvy. And um, we, we have some residents who, who don't have TVs by choice, and um, we uh, gave them a TV, just and they just watch Channel 900, so they keep their vow of no TV going. We don't hold it against them, but it's there to have them have that and communicate with people and see what's going on. So our different committees still help pick some some movies to show. Uh, we're working with um, as we we are sponsors of the opera and the symphony and the alumni association. How do we? Um, and they're not having their events either. H how can we do some some events for our residents with them? Um, and there's we're starting those discussions. And, and you know, a concert on Zoom really doesn't sound as good as a concert at the Overture or in our Grand Hall, that's for sure. But how can we do things like that? So we're mm -hmm. investigating that. Um, the the stuff that people you know do miss as well are those concerts in the Grand Hall and just getting together and having a discussion somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's still not the best thing to do. And um, in Dane County only allows 10 people or, or fewer in, in, in inside. And we are not doing that um, yet. We're gonna be trialing a small groups with some um, some groups that always met before that staff will, that are always a part of anyway. And we're gonna try that um, groups of about eight people. So that's what I've, what I've heard on that. Um, and people are adjusting and, and we get ideas from people. Hey, can we try this? So, some ideas are a quick no but other ones we're able to work in. So it, it's things like that. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Any other, yeah, um, Aileen or the Nettletons, just unmute yourself. Okay, um, for residents wanting to uh, cook their own meals, are they able to go out and shop 
uh, or are there any arrangements for uh, getting food delivered to Capital Lakes? Yeah, great, great point. Um, yes, people can go out and shop um, if they wish. If they don't want to, then we, um, you could get groceries delivered to you from the different grocery stores in town that deliver or services that deliver like Instacart. We also created our own grocery store here at Capital Lake. So, um, I, you know, I didn't mention that. We, um, we have a grocery list that residents can order from and then we'll deliver to your apartment um, that we have here. And then we also let our staff do that as well. So our staff are able to pick things up. That was a way to keep, you know, you got to keep those trips down if possible from uh, bumping into other people. So we have that. So residents can order from that and we deliver it to their apartment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Great, great question. Thanks for bringing that up. I completely forgot about that. Mm. Mert? Uh, yeah, uh, I might've missed the first couple minutes. Did you mention the, whether there have been any uh, cases or any uh, uh, infections with members and or staff? Yeah, we have not had any residents uh, with, with, with cases. We have had um, four staff members throughout the pandemic that have had it that are all um, not um, pretty much all asymptomatic, but um, were uh, and didn't spread it to anyone as far as uh, public health could tell us and we could tell. Um, and it, it's, you know, that's the risk is staff members and, and our staff have done a fantastic job of uh, staying healthy and just doing what we've, we've requested of, um, you know, don't go to groups of people you know uh, that sort of thing and we wear a lot of personal protective equipment as well so and that's that does its job um, all that stuff really works so um, that's it's gone well for us um, I don't think it's avoidable but um, we can definitely mitigate it and make it as uh, a small of an impact as possible on our staff and and hope we don't have a single resident case at all throughout this whole thing which is which is my goal yeah congratulations that's what I've, I've kind of heard I was hoping that it was still that way yeah other questions? It's Michael Apple. Uh, a question on uh, the testing process. Yeah. So let's say that uh, I uh, start showing symptoms. Um, what's the process by which I would request the test? Uh, or can you say a bit more about those kinds of things? Yeah. So um, right now, we you know we we have to send people out to get. Uh, tests and um, it, we ask people to talk to their doctor first so the doctor is and then they'll tell them what to do um, and go from there so most people that um, I know we've had some people who have gone to get tested and they just went to their doctor and got tested or could go to the Alliant Energy Center and get tested um, when we uh, for our residents in um, the health center and assisted living we're able to do those tests because we have the supplies and we send those out um, for uh, our staff when we do testing that's re recommended by the state they give us those supplies and that contract all of our tests go to exact sciences and get turned around but um, we, we bought a machine to do testing but that won't be here until this fall and then we're still working out you know the details on you know how we will we will do that because even a test a test itself is still expensive but it's um you know, who needs it, what, what, what things are necessary. And, you know, does your doctor say you should get one? Then we could give you that test. Does that answer the question? Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. Any other questions? How often does the uh, staff question? Yeah, could you repeat that? Is it more, did you have a question? Yes. Go ahead. He wants to know how often the staff gets tested. So our, in our health center, which is the, uh, it's the skilled nursing facility, they were tested twice so far. The uh, state was one, wanted to, his goal is to do staff every two weeks in a nursing home, but there's not enough supplies at this point to do that. So we're, uh, we're off, we're waiting for more supplies to keep going on every two weeks. But that's what the state recommended is right now well the staff is not going to volunteer to be tested well, we our staff have been pretty good for the nursing home to volunteer but um we you know you can't uh if you don't have symptoms this is just testing to just they're trying to get baseline and see for for especially for nursing homes to get data and um that's where we are but if uh 
you can't go out and get a test every day. Um, there's just not the capabilities to do that. Doing very well. Yeah. If they're tested positive, they lose their job. Oh, no, they don't lose their job. We have, we have sick time and we've extended everyone's sick time. And then they would just be on sick time, paid sick time until they were able to come back. Another, yeah, we, we have another question. Sure. Um, are there grills at some place in the facility? Should you yep. like to cook your own meal? Yeah, we have a grill outside. We haven't, um, that people can reserve. That's in our, in our courtyard. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from people? Okay. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to join me today. I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed seeing you and chatting with you and your questions. Uh, thank you to Ingrid for taking uh, time out of her day. I appreciate it. And I hope um, everyone stays well and, and we can see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Be well, everybody. Stay safe. Bye. Mm-hmm.